Hello students, let's talk about Lancebox. Lancebox is a corpus linguistic tool. Let's go here and go here. Lancebox is a corpus linguistics toolkit, really, not just a tool, but a toolkit. So, warning, instead of installing the original version called Lancebox with no S or X, you need to install Lancebox X that has an X. If you click on this link in my um, PowerPoint, my slides here, Lancebox X, the powerful tool for analysis of language, millions and billions of words, right? Download for now for free right there. You download it, you go through the installation process for your operating system, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. I don't know if it works for Linux. Um, anyway, I'll let you do that. You go through the installation process and you should have it working. And if you are on Mac, you may have a folder, a directory, so to speak, with Lancebox. And when you open it up, it will look like this. What I'm showing now is what it should look like. Um, and it'll probably actually say example corpus. I imagine that it'll say example corpus right there. And so what we want to do, I want to show you these tools. Let's go back over here, go down. So also you need to download some corpora from the CMS, from Canvas. Download so we can install um, or upload the corpus to the CMS. So if you go to Canvas, I'll just go to Canvas right now myself, canvasbye.edu, go into our class, right, go to modules and go down to um, week seven on the homework. I have janeaustin.zip. You could download that, click on it once, click on it twice here, it'll download it. Um, and I'm not going to do so because I've done so in the past, but you'd save it, right, unzip it. On Windows, it's called decompressing. Okay, we've done that a couple times in class. If you have any troubles, let me know, but um, I'll assume you can download a zip file and decompress it or unzip it. Okay, so that's there. If I go back to the modules and go back to, I'll go to week six, one above here, because I have a saints.zip file. If you click on that and click on this download saints.zip right there, and I'll just go ahead and do this for fun. Well, I already have it sitting right there. Well, whatever, let's go for it. And then you decompress it or unzip it again. What that means is you're taking a zip, a zip file and making it, expanding it out into its directories. This is what it looks like. I have three folders within the Saints folder, volume one, volume two, volume three. And within each of those, there's a text. So I have all the chapters from each volume of Saints as a separate TXT file there. I just simply scrape these from the church's website and put them in the TXT files um, like that. So that's what you should have for Saints. And for Jane Austen, you're going to have, uh, I guess I can just download it for fun. Let's just go ahead and download it. Go through the whole, the whole process here. I'll go to week six and download janeaustin.zip here. I'll just put in my downloads, let it go. If I unzip it on Mac, you can just click it. But on Windows, you're gonna have to extract it. Look for extract all or right click and say extract all or if you have a seven zip tool, extract all. Um, so, and it probably put it in my downloads. There it is. So I simply have six text files there from six novels by Jane Austen I grabbed from Project Gutenberg, right? That's what those are. Here is one of them. Okay, good. So we have those down from our um, Canvas CMS course management system, right? And um, what we need to do now is over in Lancebox X here, we need to create a new corpus. So if you put your cursor, I'm circling with my mouse where my cursor is right now. If you click on the example corpus, it'll, there, there'll be an option called add corpora. So if you click on add corpora, then it'll bring up this little window and there are three tabs across the top here. The second one is my data and um, we're going to upload, let's upload Jane Austen first. So I'll call the corpus name Austin. I don't need a short one if I don't want. It's English. That's correct. And then I navigate with the browse button to where it is on my hard drive, which on this computer, oops, not there. I don't want that, all of that. I, 
I want just Jane Austen right there. So you, you select the directory or folder that has the text files. You don't actually select the text files themselves, just the directory that's holding the text files. Okay, and then you can do grammatical part of speech tagging and um, it'll likely say, hey, do you wanna download this resource so that I can do part of speech tagging from Spacey? And you say yes. Now I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do it now. Um, for this demo, I would not suggest you do the semantic tagging. That takes much longer to tag. If in the future you want to do it, go ahead. But um, for now, we'll just do grammatical part of speech tagging, like parts of speech, you know, noun, verb, etc. Then you click, you click lid, uh, then you click load, corpus, right there, and it'll take a few minutes to actually tag. It's tagging for part of speech in the files and loading it up. I'm not going to do so because I've done so in the past, so I'll just click close. But you should click load corpus. Okay, and when you do that, you should have Austin sitting right here. It should say Austin, like that, or the name you gave the corpus. I gave Austin the name Austin. And it should say whole corpus right there. Okay, so let's jump back over here to my slides. So we just did, a, oh, let's do the second one. Let's repeat the process for Saints. If you come and click on Austin, add corpora. And then the second tab over, my data. And then um, saints, I'll put in, I'll just type in the word saints for my full corpus name, corpus full name. And then I will navigate to the directory on my hard drive that has, let's see, it has saints. And there are the three directories. Each, each one of them has um, a subdirectory called text. And within that, there are txt files text files right i can just simply click on the saints top level directory there see how i have highlighted in blue saints it'll it'll find all the text files in each of those three subdirectories and again i'd probably do grammatical you should do grammatical um, tagging there but probably not semantic for the moment it'll take forever if you do semantic as well and then you load corpus again i'm not going to do this myself in this demo because it um, I've done so in the past and it'll take a couple minutes for it to load. So but you would click load corpus and then you should have saints. The color may be different that the red um, font right there may be a different color for you. It's, that's not a problem. Okay, whole corpus, good. So that's what we've done so far is we've simply loaded up two corpora, one of Jane Austen's six novels that I have on uh, in week seven, module week seven, and then one of saints um, in week six. Okay, good, so all we've done is download those zip files, unzip them, and then now we've loaded them up in Lancebox X. Good, so now we're ready to move on to the actual tools. So the first tool we're gonna to look at is the Keyword and Context tool, or QUIC, K-W-I-C, however you wanna pronounce it. Um, this will bring up what are called concordance lines, so we can look at specific words used in context. Okay. Um, so maybe I'll just go like this for a second. So we're gonna look at the search query box at the top of, of Lance Box, and I'll show you um, a simple search with and without asterisk, then I'll show you how to do a corpus query language search, which is a pretty powerful way to search uh, using parts of speech, uh, using lemmas, um, using regular expressions as well. <clears throat> and I'll show you how to do case sensitive and case insensitive searches like that. So let's do that now. I'll just exit out of here and go back over to Lance Box. <clears throat> and let's start in Austin. I'm gonna change my um, change my corpus to Austin up here in the top left of my screen. It, it was on Saints. I'll just click on Saints and click on Austin here to bring up Austin. Um, so a simple search is up here in the top query um, box at the top of my screen, right, up, right next to that magnifying glass where I'm circling my cursor right now. You can just type in a word and push enter on the keyboard and it will find that word in the corpus. And it's saying that there are, let me zoom in a bit. It's saying that there are 441 tokens or hits of woman in the corpus. And now if you want to get a little bit more context, I only have five words on either side of the node word, what's called the node word, what I search for. You can click on the three vertical bars right there on the top right of the screen and corpus 
uh, excuse me, context size there, and then click on, I'll boost it up to 10 there so you can see more. So that's a simple search. You can use an asterisk to mean zero or more characters on where the, if it's right next to the word, you have woman, no space, asterisk, then enter. It should find, well, maybe there aren't any other examples of woman with nothing on the right side. Let's try something else. Let's try handsome asterisk with no space between the E of handsome and the asterisk. And it should find handsomer. Yeah, found handsomer right there, as well as handsome by itself. Handsomest is right there, handsomely and handsome. Okay, so that asterisk right there means zero or more characters when it's immediately next to um, a word or some characters. But if you have a space and then an asterisk like that, then I have a full word. I have handsome followed by another whole word like that because I put the space between handsome and the asterisk there. So that's kind of a simple search. <clears throat> um, good. Now I want to show you what um, the corpus query language syntax is. You use uh, square brackets. I have square brackets right here and I can say word equals double quotes. And then in here, I can actually use a regex, a regular expression. So for example, I'll say I want a word boundary backslash B, handsome. Then I want any more alphanumeric characters on the right hand side. So I'll do a backslash lowercase w plus an asterisk, right? The asterisk is a quantifier for zero or more of the previous thing. And we'll get the same result we saw a second ago, I assume, right? We have handsomer, handsome, handsomely and um, handsomest in all of the forms. Okay, so you can actually put regexes in the double quotes there when you um, use what's called CQL, Corpus Query um, Language search syntax here. Again, it's a square bracket and then word equals and then uh, within double quotes you have your your regular expression that we, you know, we've looked at regular expressions now a couple times. Okay, so now that's a case insensitive search. So for example, here, this line has a capital H. This is coming from Emma and it says, Mr. Dixon, you say is not strictly speaking handsome. Handsome, and there's a capital H there, right? I actually wrote a lowercase h, but because I only have one question, I only have one equal sign there after word, it's case insensitive. Now, if I want it to be case sensitive, then I would put two equal signs after word. And you can see those two equal signs up at the top left of my screen right there. If I can zoom in even more, yeah, I can zoom in a lot more. Right, so now I have two equal signs there. Now, I should not see any uppercase um, H's on handsome. I should, I should not see any capitalized handsome. I'm not seeing any so far. I'm just kind of scrolling down looking at the concordance lines. Okay, good. So that's how you do case sensitive searches is with two equal signs there. Okay, so that is the keyword and context tool. Now I'd like you to try to find some of your own. So I would like you to load up either Austin, the Austin novels like I just did or Saints and perform the following queries. Oh, you know what? I need to show you a couple more things before I do all these activities. But you can, at this point, you can find uh, a word of your choice using a regular expression like I just did with handsome. Let me show you right now before I ask you to, to do this activity. Um, to find a lemma, it's pretty easy. Let me jump out of this and go back over here to Lancebox. Rather than word right there, rather than word in my um, CQL syntax, I'll do HW for head word. HW is a shorthand, is, is short for head word. And let me just change this to something else. Let's change this to, let's say B, the word B. So head word equals one equal sign B. So now I'm seeing were, B, was, is, been, is, was, be, etc. being, been, and others. These are lemmas, these are, you know, word forms of the lemma B. So that's how you could do that. And we can do that because we had it tagged for grammatical part of speech. By grammatical, that it means you know parts of speech, whether it's a noun, verb, you know, determiner, etc. It also tags for lemma, so that's why we can use um, H W for head word equals, and then within double quotes, um, the word that we want. If we wanted to find some other word, like I don't know, let's find find, and we find find found find 
I bet we'd find finding as well. There's finding right there. Found, finding, found, etc. Right, you get the idea. Those are lemmas. So you use HW for lemmas rather than word. If I were to put word in here equals, that would only find the word find. But if I put H, HW, then it finds lemmas, the lemma. Okay, good. And there's the third one thing I want to show you, which is part of speech tags. Um, let me bring up the documentation here. Up here, Lance Box. Um, they have a pretty hefty, not hefty, what's the word? It's a 43 page manual, which is really um, in depth, really good. And so let me bring up the tag set for the clause seven tag set, uh, tagger that they use to, to tag for part of speech and lemma. So the clause tag set C7 is the version, uh, version seven. So here are the tags that I, th uh, if I'm remembering correctly now, I'm not, mm, I honestly now I'm thinking that it's, they use Spacey, which actually uses Pen Tree Bank. Now I, I'm remembering on the fly here, I'm pretty sure they use actually Spacey. So if the Pen Tree Bank tag set, if I just search that real quick and bring up, there, here's the tag set I believe that will, uh, will help us. So for example, if I wanted to find any noun, the noun part of speech tags start with N, capital N right there. See that? Noun, singular mass right there, or mass. There we have noun, plural, and then P is proper noun, singular, and then PS is proper noun, plural. Anyway, any noun starts with, uh, the part of speech tag starts with an N. So going back over to Lance Box, if in here, rather than um, HW, I put in POS for part of speech, equal sign, two quote, uh, quotation marks, and then I push, uh, put N, and then a, this is a regular expression here, then a period, which means any character, and then I do um, an asterisk for zero or more any other characters after a capital after a capital N. I should see. Yeah, this is saying, hey, there's so many, there are so many results here that I'm just going to give you a sample about five thousand. There are 142 hits here. 142,000 hits. That is 142,000 hits. Almost 143,000 hits of nouns across the Jane Austen corpus. So all these were tagged for noun as a noun in uh, by the part of speech tagger. That's what this is doing. So that's how you can search for part of speech. Now, if I only wanted, let me jump back over to the tag set. If I only wanted, you know, proper nouns that were plural, I could put in NNPS. Let's do that. Let's put in NNPS. So rather than saying, hey, I want a, I want a capital N followed by any other characters, alphanumeric characters, I want NNPS then we have proper nouns in the plural. And we have two Mrs. Musgroves from Persuasion, West Indies, Indies was tagged as plural proper noun, Queen's Squares, anyway, here we have proper nouns that are plural, right? But if you want any noun, you can say I want a capital N and then this, the dot in regular expression syntax, if you remember, is any character, and then the asterisk is, the asterisk is zero or more the previous thing and that should bring up all all nouns whatever they are in this tag set you know let me just do one more for fun uh, rb here rb um, is an adverb rbr is a comparative adverb and rbs is the superlative adverb let's see if we can just look real quick at um, rbs what do we have most and least is what was tagged our best, most, mostly most, a few best and few least. Anyway, so that's um, the part of speech tag set. Again, it's called the Pen Tree Bank Tag Set. So if you Google that, like I just did, I just simply Googled Pen Tree Bank Tag Set, and that first hit right there was the one that we were just looking at right here. Okay, so now I think you are ready to do this activity on the bottom of my screen. So load up Austin novels or the Saints, um, three volumes of Saints, and perform the following queries. The first hollow bullet below the activity, right, is find a, a word or lemma of your choice using a regular expression. The second hollow bullet is to find a lemma um, with a lemma or head, head word of your choice. That's a little bit not well written. Let me just go ahead and change this on the fly. Find a lemma, head word of your choice. 
and um, and then three, find all nouns using a regular expression um, to find all parts of speech for nouns, right? And I, like I said, I, I'm pretty sure that actually when I think of it, they're using a part of, a part of speech tagger used the pen tree bank tag set. So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video now and try that. Try these three activities at the bottom of the screen with Lance Box X. Okay, ready, set, pause. Let's look at a second tool called the text tool. It gives information about the corpus parts or the text in the corpus. In our case, we just have text, right? It gives you the number of tokens in each of those texts. It also gives you two lexical diversity measures that are much better than the simple type to token ratio. As we mentioned in class, the type to token ratio is highly influenced by text length, such that the longer the text is, the lower the type to token ratio goes. That's because you start repeating words more and more often. So one way to deal with that is um, with the moving average type to token ratio. And um, that's one of the metrics that it has, that Lancebox X has. It has a moving window of 50 words. And so what that means is that it, it takes the first 50 words and gets the type to token ratio, just a simple type to token ratio. Then it moves the window one word to the right so that it's looking at the second through the 51st word. Then it gets a type to token ratio of that 50 word span. Then it moves one word to the right and looks at the third word through the 52nd word, that just that 50 word window and gets the type to token ratio. It does that all the way through to the end of the text and then it takes the average type to token ratio of each of those um, windows. So that's what the matter or M-A-T-T-R um, subscript 50 is referring to. And then the MTLD is the measure of textual lex lexical diversity. It's another um, measure that is not influenced by text length. So, and you're gonna do this, um, you can follow along. Let's jump over to Lancebox. So right here I have the concordance of the quick view, right? On the, if I put my cursor on the right side of the screen here, there's a, it, there's a plus sign that appears over there. You can see that if I move my cursor over there, there's a plus sign that appears on the right hand side. When I click it, it brings up these options right here. The um, the one on the left here is the text um, tool. And so now uh, you can see what I just mentioned. It has the the six the six um, texts that are in the Austin corpus, the six novels. It has tokens, which are <clears throat> the number of words, the number of tokens in um, each of those texts. And it has the um, matter, or the M-A-T-T-R, the moving average TTR 50 there and it has the MTLD there as well. So it looks like Pride and Prejudice is a slightly bit more lexically diverse than the others. The one with the lowest score is Mansfield Park. So the higher these two numbers here in these columns, the more diverse the lexicon, the, the, the Lexus is, the vocabulary. Now at this point, I don't need my concordance, um, my quick view over here, so I'm just gonna click on this X to get rid of this left-hand window so that it maximizes um, the text tool here. Good. And it has this thing over here. I'm, I haven't found this too useful over here, to be frank. It's, it's simply a representation of this number of tokens is what this is doing over here. So Emma and Mansfield Park are big. Next, we have Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. And then lastly, we have these smaller ones, Persuasion at 84,000 tokens and North Angler Abbey at 78,000 tokens. And this is a little, I don't know, not a super useful in my opinion plot, but there it is. Cool, so that is the text tool. Go ahead and, and make it work. Go ahead um, and do what I just did with a text of your, with a, a corpus of your choosing. Ready, set, pause. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the next tool called words tool and It gives the frequency and dispersion of words in the corpus um, Frequency is pretty straightforward, right? Just how many times it occurs and you normalize it. You have to normalize it um, In order to know so you can compare um, the frequency of a word in this corpus versus that corpus Dispersion is also an important um, metric because um, words 
can either be like dispersed across all the corpus parts, that is all the text in a corpus, or they can be more clumpy, like clumpily organized into a few or even just one corpus part, that is one text file. And so having both frequency and dispersion is, is important when looking at words. And so we'll see um, a couple columns here. We'll see the frequency, which is just the raw frequency, just the count. The rel dot, that is relative frequency, is a normalized frequency to a base of one million words. The range is the number of corpus parts, that is text files that the word occurs in. And then it gives you three dispersion metrics. Um, coefficient of variance, I think, is CV. Julian's D, and then DP is dispersion, uh, no, deviation of proportions is what DP stands for. So let's take a look at the next tool. Go back to Lance Box. We're looking at the text tool right now. I'm gonna put my cursor on the right-hand side of this screen. By the way, you could do it in other parts. You could do it down here, or over here, but I'll just do it on the right-hand side. I put my cursor over the right. There's a plus sign that appears. I click it, and I click on the bottom um, of the four icons there. It has a W, and it brings up on the right-hand side um, the frequencies. I can't see much, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click out, just exit out of the, the text tool on the left-hand side, left half of the screen so that I can see more of um, the word tool. Now I'm gonna, it gives you two things. On the left-hand side, it gives you a table of the words organized by frequency, the being the most frequent word in this corpus, as we would expect in any English corpus. Now on the right-hand side, I have some type of graph. I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this a bit here, just kind of push this over like that, just drag over that bar that separates the two. And here are the numbers that I just mentioned, right? Frequency, relative frequency to uh, per one million words, and then the range is how many text files it occurs in. So if I just kind of skim down, we'll, we'll likely start seeing, uh, here's one, Mr. does not occur in one of those. Wow, that's interesting. Let's jump down a bit more here. I'm just gonna jump down, where was, there was one that was that two, apostrophe S, interesting. Um, Eleanor, okay, so the word Eleanor only occurs in one of the six novels. That's not surprising, but it occurs quite a bit. Um, so, and then we have a range is simply a, a percentage, or excuse me, the range percentage is simply a percentage of uh, the range. And then there are those three like little, uh, no, these are dispersion metrics. And the DP, I look at the far right one, the DP is deviation of proportion. Uh, deviation of proportion is what it's called. Um, the, the higher the value is, the more clumpily organized, uh, the more clumpy the word is. So in this case, for example, Russell only occurs in one text file and the DP is 0.88. Um, so, good, that is looking at frequency and dispersion. And this little plot is mildly useful, in my opinion. So you guessed it, you're gonna go ahead and do this yourself. Get the frequency dispersion of words in a corpus of your choice. Ready, set, pause. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the final tool called Graph Call or Call. It um, gives us information about collocates. Collocates, the noun, are words that occur near specific other words more than by chance. There's like some type of attraction between collocates and their node words. Collocations are is the term to refer to, to the two words occurring together within a certain span of words. Usually four or five words of each other is, is usually the span that you'll see most often. The distribution is a little plot that will show you um, on the left hand left and right hand sides of the node word where the collocate occurs. We'll look at some examples here in a second. Frequency of the collocation is the frequency of the collocation, that is the two words occurring together. The frequency corp, um, the column that's called freak corp, is the frequency of the collocate in the corpus, not just within four or five words of the node word, but just overall in the corpus. And then there are um, several metrics that are used. The log dice, MI is mutual information, delta P from left to right, and delta P from right to left. That's what one and two stand for there. Let's take a look there. I'm gonna exit out of here. Let's go back over to Lance Box. Um, I guess I'll just use, yeah, I'm gonna change Corpus X. I'm gonna change Corpus right now. I'm gonna to go to Saints 
and use Saints to do this. Um, again, I'm gonna go ahead and on the right-hand side, put my cursor on the right-hand side, get that plus sign again, and then I'll click on the far right of those four little icons there, it's the graph call icon. And I'm gonna go ahead and just close down this previous, uh, the left-hand screen, just get rid of that for now. And um, what you have to do is you have to type in a word. So if I type in Lord and let it go, um, what I have here, I typed in Lord at the top of my screen there and pushed enter on my keyboard. What I have, I have two things. On the left-hand side, I have a table. On the right-hand side, I have um, this graphic, this, this graph call um, graph thing. For the moment, I'm gonna make the uh, table a little bit bigger and we'll look at the, the plot here in a second. But like I mentioned, um, it gives you the call kit. That is the word that occurs within four or five. Well, in this case, I have um, five left. You can specify up here in the top of the screen. I have L5 and R5. That means I want um, up to five words to the left and five words to the right, which you can either increase or reduce by clicking on those drop down uh, boxes there, the top of the screen there. I'll just leave it at the, at the default of L5 and, and R. Um, L is for left five and R5 is for right five. So it's looking within five words to the left and five words to the right of Lord. And what are the most common words in that space? Will has the highest log dice score. This is currently organized by log dice. I can tell that by this little triangle right there. And it's, so it's saying that, that Will collocates the most with Lord. Next, the collocates the most with Lord. And you can see here, let me just get rid of these things keep popping up. Um, just trying to use my, my cursor here. Where am I? Okay, it's, um, what, I, what I'm trying to show here with my cursor is that the occurs the most often in L1 position. That is one word to the left of Lord. That's why this, this box right here, this, this plot, um, bar on this bar um, plot, is the tallest because there we have the three or the five left words and then a space where the node word is that is lord goes and then we have the the five right words over there so by and large the occurs right one word to the left of lord which makes sense the lord right what it's doing here the boxes that keep popping up are they're giving me concordance lines here i can look at um of that <clears throat> will more often than not occurs one word to the right of lord that's what that distribution there. Here's the frequency of the call kit. Here's the frequency of the, um, excuse me, the frequency of the collocation. And then here's the frequency of the call kit in the corpus generally. And then here are those various metrics. Uh, log dice is the default one. Let me just try and get rid of all these boxes that are popping up. I do not want to have so many boxes popping up. Don't need all those boxes going crazy on me. Mm. <laughs> okay. Anyway, log dice is the one that it's organized. If you want to sort by another metric, you can do um, click on it like that. Um, so, yeah, the so delta p one is going from left to right, going from um, yeah left to right. Delta p two is going from right to left. Anyway, that's what those words are there. Now, um, let me let me just get rid of that for the moment and do it again so that it starts afresh. Let's go back to Saints, type in Lord, push enter, and I get this plot. So on the right-hand side of my screen right now, I have a plot. Let me make this a little bigger for us. And the closer the word is to the node, which is the middle of the plot, so it says Lord right in the middle, the closer it is, the stronger the collocation um, is. That is, the stronger the word association between the collocate and the node is. So the is really close right there. Will is really close right there. Apostrophe S is really close, which is not its own word, right? But so the closer they are to the node, the stronger the the attraction or association between the the node that is Lord and the collocates. And then the bigger the circle that represents the collocate, um, that deals with frequency. If you put your cursor over the circle, it'll give you some information here about it. Um, the corpus frequency is right there. Um, I think that's what it is. I'm pretty sure that's that's what that refers to there and then um no sorry it's the color that's given the frequency of the colic in the corpus and then the size i believe is the collocation frequency and if you search for another word if i search for if i um, just erase lord up in the top of my screen and and type in something else like 
I don't know, I'll just type in brother. It'll change the graph on the far on the right hand. You see that how it changed it? So here's Lord still down here. Here's the collocate kind of cloud of Lord, the words that collocate with it. And then up here on the top, let me zoom in a bit if I can zoom in. Here I have brother at the top um, of this little network. And you can see the collocate. So older and younger collocate strongly with brother, unsurprisingly. Hiram, Alvin, Henry, sister collocates with brother, not surprising either. Father, dear. And then the ones that are shared, let me back out a little bit so we can see that the bottom, the bottom network or cluster there is Lord. The top is brother. And then the collocates that are shared between those two node words, that is brother and Lord, are here in the middle between those two clouds or networks right there. So if, let's zoom in a bit here. Uh, looks like mother and church and also was um, Smith are um, collocates that are shared between both. Okay, so you guessed it. Once you guys take a minute here to type in a node word of your choice in the query box and inspect the collocates, looking at the table on the left as well as the plot, that graph thing on the right, the network plot. And then once you've done that, type in a, another word up in the query box and see um, it create a, a second kind of network within the, the larger network plot or graph. Okay, so ready, set, pause. So that brings us to a quick conclusion. Maybe it wasn't quick for you, but it seemed pretty quick for me, um, of the Lancebox X tool. It has um, four main tools that we just saw in sequence. There's, um, it's really useful. You can use regular expression. You can do part of speech. You can use semantic tagging, which I, I mentioned that we didn't do here, but you, you should give that a try too. Um, so that is the end of this video. See you next time.